You'll never believe what happens when spike protein starts circulating through your body. It's remarkable. We've got a recent public paper that has just come out that shows you what happens when they inject spike um, protein into a mouse model. And it reflects what is likely to happen in terms of serum viremia. I've been talking about this for some time because this is one of the big concerns that I have. People who get what they think are mild infections, but in effect, they are having circulating virus going through their body, damaging various organs. And the only reason they don't know is because very often that damage is silent. This is really serious and not something that we all need to take into consideration. So here is what I'll be showing you an image from. It's this paper that was published on the 29th of November. Persistence of spike protein in the skull and meninges brain axis may contribute to the neurological sequelae of COVID-19. Now, this has really been focused on a long COVID kind of picture, but it has demonstrated some stuff that we can extrapolate to what is happening um, in the body. And this is part of the reason why I am so concerned about the circulation of the virus. And when I think about what is happening, I reflect on the fact that essentially what you need to do is to protect your body from virus breaking through immunity. Now, just so that before I show you the image, I'll make sure you get the basics here. As usual, I start off with this is the virus, multiple spike proteins on the surface, about 25 on each viral particle. It again gets into the upper airway, infects the cells inside the upper airway, replicates and then starts to spread in the upper airway before penetrating this mucosal barrier and getting into the systemic circulation. That's where it gets past the lymph nodes and then into the bloodstream. This is the sequence that the virus has to do. Now, it's important to note that if the virus can't penetrate this mucosal barrier, this doesn't happen. This is no longer relevant. And this is why I said mucosal immunity is such a critical part of understanding how to be protected in this ongoing viral circulation, especially in highly vaccinated regions. And I think that it's important to grasp because we know from autopsy studies done earlier in the pandemic that we see more viral dissemination in the vaccinated autopsies than the unvaccinated ones. And so it indicates that even though symptoms may be milder, potentially because of things like IgG4, which is more like a tolerant antibody, which tends to be high in the vaccinated cohort, it may allow the virus to circulate for longer and therefore infect other organs. And so one of the mistakes people are making is that they keep on presuming that because infections are mild at the moment and the fact that intensive care units are not full, it means everything is over. No. When you, want, when you see what happens here in this, this short video that I'm going to show you, you will understand why this is so important to grasp. Now, this here is the video, and it's showing you a mouse model. What they did is they then injected spike protein into this mouse and then saw what happened. So I'll talk you through essentially what they showed with regards to this paper. Here is what it looks like. Those are the kidneys there, and those have lit up. You can see as they're scanning through, all the way up through the chest, up to the brain of the mouse, and they're breaking it down now. This here is, as they said, the optical section view. Wherever you see red, that means spike protein. So they have highlighted it with a fluorescent um, dye so that it lights up. You can see this here represents the kidney. And what happens, that is probably as highly lit as any other thing. The intestine, because it is so large, it has such an impact. The liver is also taken up as well as the lung.
Interestingly, you will notice that even the lung, even though the lung has taken up spike protein, it's not as significant as the kidney or the liver. It's spread into the spinal cord. It's spreading all the way up into the brain. And so this, as I said, is the mouse model where they have injected spike protein. And therefore, wherever we see that fluorescent um, light, that's where the, um, the spike protein has lodged. It's all through the skull, into the skull, into the meninges. The spike protein literally is spreading along the blood vessels, and it is just literally everywhere through this mouse model. So really, really significant, significant. And this is why, and they're showing you here another version of it here, in terms of the, um, the, the spread in terms of the liver and where it's concentrated. This is huge stuff in terms of the impact that is happening on the body when viral spike protein gets into the circulation and goes through the, um, the body. It binds literally to all the organs. And this is why I keep on saying to people, the challenge is, how do we prevent how do we prevent the virus from breaking through that mucosal barrier and this is where as i said um the reality is that covid is circulating very highly in vaccinated regions and so while vaccination has an impact on the severity of the disease this aspect in terms of ongoing infection and potential ongoing breakthrough into the, um, the bloodstream seems to be different. Interestingly, in the study, they did show that within 10 days of the mouse being vaccinated, it had less circulation, which is not surprising because the, the antibodies would be at the highest there. But we know that the antibody level drops off quite quickly and you can still have people being infected. And so the big challenge is around mucosal immunity. How do we strengthen this? How do we keep the virus only in the upper airway and not spreading through the body? And this is where one of the solutions is actually quite simple. And when I show you here in terms of the, the mucosal immune defense, it's not just a layer of, of tissue. There are cells there, but it is very sophisticated with a, a really robust immune defense. So it's not easy for any virus to penetrate it. And all we have to do is support this mucosal immune defense so that virus doesn't break through into the bloodstream. The simple way that I have been saying now for probably a year, we did a book on this because it's so important, is through the sinuses. A lot of people don't realize that different from the earlier variants, the Omicron variants really have a predilection for infecting these sinuses. And this is why a lot of people have sinus symptoms after or around when they are being infected by uh, Omicron. And then what happens is, is because it can sit in the sinuses and cause inflammation, you can't get rid of it so easily. And it's very difficult to get anything up into these sinuses to clear it from infection. And this is why we said that the best way of going forward is to use the application of science and the way and the understanding of how the body works. And this is why we created this document, Nitric Oxide and the Sinuses. In this, this is in collaboration with Lumientia, and this was one of our second or third books. Um, and in it, we, we cover quite an important area as explaining the science around what happens with the, si the sinuses, what is the characteristic of nitric oxide, so that nitric oxide's role in health, you know, it's antibacterial, it's, um, it's antiviral, it's anti-inflammatory, it does all kinds of things, and it's a gas. And critically, you increase it in the sinuses just by humming. I mean, it is, it is so unbelievable, simple strategy. And this is probably one of the reasons why when we think of things like meditation um, or some of the chanting that is used in, in, some, um, in some religions, that 
it is so effective at keeping them healthy because it's just increasing the nitric oxide concentration in the sinuses. Now, there are some people who will say, oh, come on, that can't be right. That must be crazy stuff. Well, when we did it, we went and got all the references. So these are all published papers talking about nitric oxide, talking about the sinuses, talking about the impact on the respiratory. This is serious stuff. And so therefore you, if you choose to educate other people about this, and this is the point, it's not just about you, is that you should share this with other people because it is so valuable. Very simple strategy. Our hope was that the whole world would start humming and therefore stop the pandemic because then you couldn't get any viral infections through. So make sure you pass on that message. Where do you get it? In the link below, this is the course. There's a full course I've created on this. Um, it's a paid course, but if you are not interested in the paid course, the introduction is free as well as critically the ebook is free you just have to register for the platform and you can get that um that short ebook for free and if you then want you can look at all the explanation about what is nitric oxide the benefits of it how does it neutralize the spike protein this is just science and as i said you are best served by being educated having a grasp of what is going on and so just for a reminder, in case anyone had missed it, let's take you through again what happens with regards to when spike protein is injected into a mouse model. You can see it spreads all through the brain. Wherever it lights up fluorescent is where it is in the body. And they are demonstrating here a beautiful paper, remarkable piece of work, kidneys, um, a very high concentration of spike protein. So expect kidney disease to be on the rise. Liver as well, moderate concentration. Look at the intestines, huge amount of concentration of spike protein there all the way through. The lungs, even though it causes severe disease, is not as highly concentrated. Um, and this is because it's going from the bloodstream. And then in the spinal cord, you can see that spike protein literally goes everywhere in the body, into the brain, into the skull, into the meninges. This is absolutely serious stuff. And this is why I'm saying, listen, forget what anybody is telling you about COVID being over. This is just warming up because nobody is taking it seriously. We're now five years into the pandemic and people still have the idea that this is over, this is no big deal, this is just a cold. Believe me, there is no more sophisticated virus I have ever seen from a clinical point of view. And I don't underestimate it. I would not advise you to do the same. Just be prepared. Just recognize that as long as the virus can't get into your bloodstream, it's unlikely to cause you harm. If it just stays in the upper airways, it's then even less than a cold. But once it penetrates and gets into circulating in the bloodstream, that's where we have serious disease happening, not immediately, sometimes three, sometimes six months down the line, because it will damage the kidneys, the liver, the heart, the brain, the spinal cord. It just gets everywhere and triggers inflammatory responses. So let's take this seriously this winter. Hum yourself into health, protect yourself with your general health, and make sure we stay safe. Have a great evening.